Okay, this is Algebraic Geometry Lecture 9, where we will be discussing the Lasker-Nurta theorem. So for background, um, let's just recall that um, algebraic sets correspond to radical ideals of k x1 up to xn. So this is algebraic sets of affine space. So this is just the strong version of the null stellen sets. We also know that an algebraic set is equal to a finite union of irreducible algebraic sets. Now, algebraic sets correspond to radical ideals. The irreducible algebraic sets correspond to prime ideals. Just remind everybody that a prime ideal is called prime um, if a, b in the prime ideal p implies a is in p or b is in p. Another way of putting this is that p is a prime ideal of a ring r if r over p is an integral domain. So it's easy to check that an irreducible algebraic set is one whose corresponding ideal is prime. Um, so this gives us um, the following theorem that says any radical ideal p, any radical ideal a is an intersection of a finite number of prime ideals. So this is just the theorem that says an algebraic set is the union of, of a finite number of irreducible algebraic sets. We have translated it into ring theoretic language. And one obvious question is, um, what about ideals that aren't radical? Um, can you find some sort of similar decomposition? And the answer is given by Lasker. which says that um, an ideal A of k x1 up to xn is, a fin is the intersection of a finite number of primary ideals. So we'll mention what primary ideals are in a moment. The theorem. Um, Nurta generalized it. Say so this is also true for Nurturian rings. Um, so Lasker um, was uh, actually the Lasker um, who was world chess champion for longer than anybody else has been world chess champion. And he actually proved this theorem while he was world chess champion. Um, if you look up his supervisor, his supervisor turns out to be Nurta, only it wasn't this Nurta. So Lasker's supervisor was Max Nurta, who was in fact the father of Emmy Nurta, who is this Nurta, who, who Nurturian rings in the Lasker Nurta theorem is named after. So Max Nurta has been, um, somewhat overshadowed by his daughter, Emmy Nurta, but he was in fact quite a good mathematician in his own right. Anyway, we now need to explain what a primary ideal is. So a primary ideal has two different definitions. First, we have Lasker's original definition, which says that P, an ideal P, of a ring R is um, primary. Um, this means that if A B is in P, then A is in P or B to the N is in P for some N. 
So it's a little bit weaker than the condition that the idea. Prime, if you. So this gives the impression that primary ideals are just powers of prime ideals. Well, that's not true in general. Primary ideals and prime ideals are kind of related, but the relationship, I mean, um, in, in general, primary ideals need not be powers of prime ideals. Um, well, um, it turns out to be so it's sometimes better to focus not on the ideal p but on the module r over p so r over p has the property that um, if a b equals naught with a in r and b in r over p then b equals zero or a to the n equal and this works for any module over r um, so we can actually talk about modules rather than rings and if it satisfies this condition we say the module is co-primary so so this condition here for a module is, is the definition of a module being co-primary. Unfortunately, mathematical notation has got a bit messed up because co-primary is really the important concept and primary is a sort of more or less a special case of it. So for ideals in the ring, the ideal is primary if and only if the quotient by the ideal is co-primary, but co-primary works for arbitrary modules. Well, it turns out this definition isn't terribly convenient to work with. Um, there's a more convenient definition. So here's an alternative definition. So a module M is co-primary if it has exactly one associated prime which obviously raises the question what is an associated prime of a module well an associated prime is a prime prime ideal so that r over p um so, so that R over P is isomorphic to a submodule of M. Saying R over P is contained in M is not strictly speaking correct. It's not really a submodule of this. So this is slightly sloppy notation for saying that M contains submodule isomorphic to R over P. But as usual, being um, precisely correct kind of conflicts with human intuition and it's more convenient to think of r over p as being a submodule of m and remember that isn't quite correct so we've got two different definitions um, if the ring r is notarian the two definitions of co-primary are equivalent which i'm not going to bother to prove but you can find it in any reasonable book on commutative algebra um, so this alternative definition turns out to be usually easier to use in practice it's also a bit more natural because it only talks about one module M, whereas the definition of primary ideals talks about two separate ideals. Um, in general, we say that if M contains a submodule N, then N is called 
primary if and only if m over n is co-primary. And again, there are two different definitions of that, depending on which definition of co-primary you use, but they're equivalent for finitely generated modules over Noetherian rings. I should say these are equivalent for finitely generated modules, not for arbitrary modules. So um, with this alternative view of the Lasker Noether theorem, the Lasker Noether theorem for modules, so these are going to be finitely generated modules over Noetherian rings, um, says that um, zero is an intersection of primary um, submodules of M. Or alternatively, um, M is actually contained in a finite direct sum of co-primary modules. Um, so, originally the lasker noether theorem was thought to be a theorem about ideals, saying that every ideal is an intersection of co-primary ideals. It's really more useful to think of it as being a theorem about modules, saying that every module is contained in a direct sum of co-primary modules. And this should be a finite direct sum. Um, for example, this is pretty similar to a well-known theorem about abelian groups. So if we look at Z modules, abelian groups, um, then um, some examples of co-primary modules are the module Z to the N, where here the prime ideal is just zero, or any finite group of order p to the n for some p. And this is a co-primary module whose associated prime ideal is p. So what this says is that if you've got a finitely generated abelian group, it's contained in a direct sum of, a, of copies of z and finite groups of prime power order. Well, if you remember the structure theorem for abelian groups, you've actually got a slightly stronger theorem. It's actually equal to a direct sum of free abelian groups and finite groups of order of power of p. Um, over arbitrary rings, you only get a containment. You, you, a module m is not generally equal to a direct sum of this form. Um, so how do you prove alaska noether theorem? Well, as is original formidable, it took about 100 pages, which was one of the longest theorems um, published at that time. Um, Noether proved a more general theorem, and her proof is very much simpler. In fact, you can give the proof on about a page.